So always be prepared. You said you're in the village. So know your village staff. Where is your village? Know the province, know the location. Know your chief, know your MP, know everything about your village. You have to prove to them you stay in the village. As well as you lied about your poorness. How poor are you? Always be alert of how poor you are. Anyways, guys, after all that, that's how we're shortlisted. And then we're remaining like that. Then the successful candidates, you will be told on that day, but they won't even wait. When you mess up, they'll tell you bye-bye, you can go. So after that, after everything has been done and everything has been said, the next stage now is on that day, they will tell you who wants to go to South Africa. You'll be like, I want to go to South Africa. Who wants to go to Europe? There's Germany, there's whatever. So I mean, now I was a mama's baby, so I didn't want to leave Africa. And I wanted to go to South Africa because my and welcome to my youtube channel i'm your host talia if it's your first time here hello and welcome and if you're a returning subscriber thank you for always tuning in commenting and liking my video so if you haven't subscribed what are you waiting for click the subscribe button please support me i really want your support let us grow together this year we have a vision of 5,000 subscribers so guys just subscribe it doesn't cost money it's for free anyways let's get into today's video thank you all to those who watched my previous video i posted about the zimbabwe presidential scholarship that video is not about views but it's about it reaching the right people i want to help change someone's life i want someone to be helped the way i was helped so i know a lot of people they don't have information that's why some things they are not moving for example someone could finish high school and they pass with all A's, pass with flying colors. But because the university is so expensive in Zimbabwe, some people, they don't go to university. You know, these days in Zimbabwe, the university, they pay the US dollars and it's very high, thousands of US dollars per semester. So most people, they end up not going to the university, but they are very intelligent and their futures are bright. So that really pained my heart when I saw how now, like how expensive it is now to go to the university in Zimbabwe. So this video is spe specifically for my fellow Zimbabweans, I have you at heart. I told you guys my story of how my life changed. For me to be here, I give it credit to the Zimbabwean Presidential Scholarship. It is the one which made it possible for me to come to South Africa. It is the one, guys. I'm really grateful. So I told you everything. So guys, if you haven't watched my previous video on how to apply for the Presidential Scholarship, Go and check it out so that you catch up here because here i'm not gonna tell you or i'm not gonna repeat what i said in the follow in the previous video so in the previous video that, that's when i told you the requirements and how to go about it in today's video i want to talk about the processes or like how how long it takes for you to be accepted the processes and stuff but before i do that make sure you've subscribed to this channel Make sure you like this video guys please like my videos don't forget to comment it really motivates me to keep going however it's not by force if you feel like you don't want to subscribe it's fine if you feel like you don't want to like my video it's fine and guys the previous video it's doing well it's reaching to the right people and i told you guys to reach out to me in my inbox on facebook or instagram people are reaching out and i've been helping people I helped 20 students to apply for this scholarship and I wish them nothing but the best. So this is, as I'm making this video, it's in 2024 and the applications for the Zimbabwean Presidential Scholarship, they are closing on the 1st of March, 1st of March, 2024. However, you know, videos, they last on YouTube. Maybe you're watching this video five years later from now. Just know that, don't worry, the requirements is just the same process. But just check when is the closing date for you. But as for this year, it's on Friday. This coming Friday, the 1st of March. That's the closing date. So it's not late. If you are seeing this video now, and if it's not yet the 1st of March, just apply. You can still get the scholarship. And watch my previous video so that you have background knowledge. Anyways, guys, in today's video, like I said, I'll be talking about the processes. So after you've applied, 
you have submitted all the required documents like i said they won't take your documents or they won't consider you if you don't have a passport so to all those who have a passport everything is in order you will definitely get the scholarship if everything is in order why won't they give you a scholarship they have to give you because everything is in order so guys now you have submitted your documents you are submitting your documents on the first of march what's next is it's not even a process you just go to the offices like i said if you look on the poster each province has their own offices so when you just go to submit it's just like they will check your documents you go and give them the documents then they just check them after them checking the documents they will see if you have everything in order and if you have something missing they don't take your documents they will tell you it's missing go back and look for this and look for that they don't take incomplete application because they know they're not going to process them then after that you have submitted your documents they accept the documents you are good to go what's next is just go home pray and start believing in faith in my own case guys i knew i was gonna get it like i'm someone who has faith like i said i had 13 points but i was competing with people with 20 points people with 15 points but the god i saved i knew he was gonna do it for me guys because i told myself i don't want to go to the university in zimbabwe i want to go and learn in south africa so i was telling god and that was my only opportunity because school fees in south africa it's very expensive even accommodation so i knew there was no way my parents was gonna afford that so i really needed this scholarship so guys after that um you go home and wait and the waiting is long imagine they've submitted your documents in march in our case they only called back or responded in july so imagine you wait from march april may june july it's five months of waiting waiting guys you'll be waiting and waiting like really waiting so how they respond they don't send emails they don't send messages they call remember this is the ministry of foreign affairs and also the prestigious scholarship ministry you are dealing with cios you are dealing with ministers and stuff like that so they want to make sure that everything is legit so they will call you so guys if you applied for the scholarship always be on the lookout for unknown numbers or for office phone numbers they'll be phoning, phoning you with the landline so you know landline numbers they are different from normal cell phone numbers so always be on the lookout for those numbers if you applied for the scholarship and after that guys always make sure your phone is charged and obviously the phone during waking hours so every day the moment you apply for a scholarship always make sure that your phone is on you're always making sure that you receive calls so in my case the lucky part i didn't have a phone by then i think when i applied so i used my father's phone number that was the advantage because guys i'm not always on my phone and i'm not nice when i speak so when they call you they don't tell you who they are they just ask you hello are we speaking to tariru then they'll start asking you questions guys from nowhere and if you are rude you are disqualified and you won't even be knowing who is speaking that's how most people lost the scholarship so i'm just telling you guys when they call you just be nice be nice you don't so in general even if you apply for jobs in the future sometimes they just call people randomly so whenever you receive a call just be nice because you don't know who is calling so most people during our time they got disqualified because they were rude during the calls because when they call you they just ask you your name where do you stay imagine boys you guys remember you lied that you stay in the village like i said they want people from rural areas they call you are we speaking to tariro then you say yes then you'll be like who are you speaking to they can be saying just answer our questions where do you stay i'll be like i stay in Mashingo, but on my cv i said i stayed in chirumans in the village be careful so in my case it was my dad so when they had it's my dad at least this was better you know there's respect when my dad is old they can hear it's an, an older person so they called and asked him hello i was speaking to tariro then they said no this is taro's father then they're like where is tariro then there's like taro is with their mother so luckily enough in my case on my motivational letter because i said when you write a motivational letter you are motivating yourself why they should give you the scholarship apparently in my case my parents were divorced they were separated they were divorced so i also added that on my motivation i said i'm poor uh, I, ca I come from the village and my parents are divorced so it was good they asked when it started it was like she is with her mother so that's already it it was a tick when i said they were divorced so it saved me and they said okay tell her that she got the prestigious scholarship and she must come to the offices in august we are gonna have physical interviews so you see i was lucky 
that's why i say god loves me because i definitely know if by that time i had the phone and i'd put my own phone number and they called i didn't know that's how they operate I mean i talk shit sometimes if someone's asking me who i i was gonna be like why are you asking me you're the one who quotes don't you want to talk to me hey I was gonna be disqualified so i thank god everything happens for a reason i didn't have a phone that time so they called my dad it's fine let's move on after the calling process the next stage is if you answered them well and if you responded to them well they will just do some background check on that call to just make sure that both they'll be going through your applications you see i think they almost call everyone but then on the call already they are shortlisting right so if you you qualify that that stage of calling the next thing is they'll call you for interviews maybe two weeks after the call or so so we went for interviews in Harare. Like I said, all of you are applying from different provinces. Like you're applying for Mashingo, you're applying from where. But the interviews, they happen in Harare and they happen the same day. All now the scholars who have qualified, they'll go to the offices. So you go to Compensation Harare. That's where the Office of the Spanish Junior Scholarship is. You will meet different people, the people from the department, you meet with the minister, you meet with what? They also have CIDs, C10s, Masi Namba, Chichi. Then they'll be asking you questions. Be smart, guys. When you go there, don't dress up. Remember, I said you're poor. So wear your waist clothes. Don't say, you said you're poor on your CV. So if you're poor, why would you go to the interview with a Brazilian? You said you're coming from the village. Why would you go with makeup and looking fans? Guys, look poor. Remember, I'm doing this for your future. It's not about slaying. So, me not that one, I got it very well. I I went looking all, you know, like a village person. Then after that, our interview was nice. Both we were many. On our group, we were so many. Because there were people going to China. There were people going to Russia. There were people going to Algeria. There were people going to South Africa. Even the South Africa. South Africa people were so many. Going to Fort Year, we were like 62. Then there were people going to University of Jobbik. They were also saving to something. There were people going to UP. There were people going to Nesoma. Like all the universities in South Africa. So we were so many. So on that day, it was not possible for them to interview us like one one. So in our case, they just grouped us according to universities. Then we went in the boardroom. Then they screened us there. How they screened us was, they would ask us, are you at a university? Because guys, remember, you must not have enrolled at any other university. Because imagine, that's why I'm saying, those who are applying for this scholarship, don't apply for university in Zimbabwe. Just wait a bit. Or apply for the August intake. Because I think the interviews, they happen before August. So if you already have enrolled for the August intake, you are doomed. Because when they, these people are smart, they are professionals. You are dealing with criminal and you ask that CID, you are towards people, intelligent people, like people of intelligence. They know how to interrogate you. And you are only a child. They know how to get information from you. So they were asking us, how many people have already enrolled for the university? Then people will be like, which investor? Someone will be like, I'm going to invest of Zimbabwe. I'm going to Midland State University. Then be like, okay, you guys are done. You can go, go to use it. We want people who cannot afford university. That's how people are screened. They'll be asking you, how many people have applied locally? Then people will raise their hands. I've applied at Investor of Zimbabwe. Then they'll be like, okay, it's fine. What if we give you money to pay for your fees at Investor of Zimbabwe? You can go. Already, that's how they were screening us. So, Mina. I had applied at University of Zimbabwe. However, I did not want to go because I knew I wanted the law. And University of Zimbabwe they had given me social work, and that's the only university I applied. So when they said how many people are in university, I didn't raise my hands because I didn't finish that application. Secondly, how many people are going to university? I mean, I knew I was not going to use it. I, want, I didn't want to go to University of Zimbabwe because they had given me social work, yet I wanted law. So I didn't raise my hands. That's how safe I was. So guys, those who said they had gotten university, they were disqualified. Those who had said we are enrolled, they were disqualified. But it's a proof that you can manage to apply on your own. You also qualify for local universities. Because they were saying it's not fair. But you know, it's also tough to get admission into Zimbabwe. But the investors are not that mean, you see. So imagine they were like, you already have a place. Just go to your place. Let us give others a chance who don't have a place to go and start. 
Then after all those, they'll be do, then they'll also do some background check. Me and I, what do your parents do? Always be smart. Remember what you said. Me na luckily enough, it was the truth. My parents were not working, both of them. Because of, ah, what do your parents do? They don't work. Where do you stay? Who is your village yet? So guys, no, who is your auntie said you stay in the village. So no, your village head, no, your chief, no, what, what. But they can ask you those questions, you know. So always be prepared. You said you're in the village. So know your village staff. Where is your village? Know the province, know the location. Know your chief, know your MP, know everything about your village. You have to prove to them you stay in the village. As well as you lied about your poorness. How poor are you? Always be alert of how poor you are. Anyways, guys, after all that, that's how we're shortlisted. And then we're remaining like that. Then, the successful candidates, you will be told on that day. But they won't even wait. When you mess up, they'll tell you bye-bye. You can go. So after that, after everything has been done and everything has been said, the next stage now is, on that day, they will tell you, who wants to go to South Africa? You'll be like, I want to go to South Africa. Who wants to go to Europe? There's Germany, there's whatever. So I mean, now I was a mama's baby. So I didn't want to leave Africa. And I wanted to go to South Africa because my brother is based in South Africa. And I just love South Africa, guys. I just dreamed about South Africa. Then after that, you know, then they'll, they'll give you what you want. They'll ask you, what do you want to start? So it must also link to what you did, you wrote on your CV, what you wrote on your motivational letter. You see? You must, so you must also motivate where you want to go there. So that's it, guys. So... I thought I said I want to go to South Africa and there are so many universities. So they will just divide you. Like when I are going to invest of Fort Year, when I are going to Nelson Mandela University, when I are going to invest of Jobek, when I are going to Fitz, what what what? That's how it happened. Then they gave us application forms we filled. Then they'll apply for you for the university. They applied for us guys. Then that's the process name. After that, they will do the application for you, they'll pay for you the application fees, they'll do everything. But it's an agreement between government so it's easier you definitely get a position then after that in our case again because we we're so many right some people didn't qualify at the university even though they had gotten the prestigious scholarship but when the scholarship people applied for the people to the universities some people didn't have mathematics uh, for the programs they wanted they wanted mathematics some didn't pass so well some their english were bad you know like maybe they had a c or something and you want to do law so they were not admitted i know people who cried guys like when we got our offer letters from the universities some people didn't qualify it was not the scholarship we denied them but it was the university you get they said they didn't meet the requirements so guys another thing pray for god to give you grace pray that when those who are selecting at the university they must accept you now that's the last stage after that, um, when the university, the moment the university is communicated, it's around October. That's when universities finalize places. That's when they give places for people and stuff like that. Then those, I'm talking about South Africa, but that's where I came. But those who are going to Europe, they go that same year. Imagine, like I said, you get the prestigious scholarship around July. Then in September, you already go to Europe or whatever. But for South Africa, South Africa only has one intake. South Africa only take people in January. So already the year is going. You get your, you will be first year next year. That's when you start school because they only have one intake. So for South Africa, you just have to wait for next year. So if you are applying for South Africa, this year you are not going to university. You are only going to go to invest next year. But if you are going to Europe, you go to invest this year, somewhere around September. So after that, uh, when the university finally sent the, the offer letters, that one happens at different stages. I remember when we went for the interviews, I met people. Some went to FITS, some went at UJ. I remember Investor of Jobek is the one which sent offer letters first. That one is no longer beyond, it's now beyond the prestigious scholarship. You just have to wait upon the university, you get. So after that, uh, when the, the investors will just be telling the personal scholarship, uh, we have accepted so and so and so. So the moment the personal scholarship, they get the offer letter, they will call you, they will tell you congratulations, you've been admitted at the investor of what, what, what. So our first year, guys, they were so slow. We got, a, we got our offer letters in October, but I know you invest of job, they got their offer letters like very early. So now it depends on the investor. Then after that, after you get your offer letters, they will call you again to come to Harare, 
prestige open office conversation house that's the name of the building then there they'll do the application process for you for the study visa you actually get a letter i'll attach my own letter here you get a letter from the personal office which you go with to vfs global that's where you apply for a study visa then they'll apply for you but you bring your own man for example the personal scholarship they don't apply a passport for you that's why they say you we want people with passport number two they won't pay your visa for for you you apply the visa i think visa is around 200 us so you have to look for your man so always save that money guys yeah that's it then after you apply for your visa the visa for prisoner scholarship guys it comes even a week or even days because it is that you know imagine a letter accompanying your visa application a, a letter from the minister saying this student is on the prestigious scholarship so your visa comes early guys like it comes early just four days the visa is out because it's government things guys so the visa comes out the maximum is a week or some days you know so after your visa is out now you know how i'm going to school that is guys then after that in february you will be invited because university is open in february so definitely all the scholars you have a send-off ceremony in harare so they will call you to harare and you go with your parents so they so each student you have a place for two people so for example it's like mom and dad but there are students who are orphans so you can bring your relatives only two people per person then you go to a hotel guys and in my case it was my first time being at a hotel and my mother was so happy that day she was like daughter you made me proud it's also my first time being in a five-star hotel then you have buffet like you choose the food you want to eat then also the minister will address they'll be giving you advice they'll tell you you are now a student you are representing your country go make us proud make Zimbabwe proud pass those studies make us proud and another thing guys which you have to know is that the presidential scholarship they don't allow you to fail when you go to university you are not allowed to fail you have to make sure you pass because if you fail even one module they will remove you on the scholarship they will say we are wasting our man so guys when you go there don't fail even a single module if you fail they'll remove you you come back home so they don't tolerate failure at all they'll say you are wasting the country's resources then secondly, they don't allow you to get pregnant. You can get married, but you're not allowed to get pregnant. Because they say getting pregnant, that's being mischievous. And as well, getting pregnant, it will affect your studies. So they'll be like, we send you to study. Why would you get pregnant? They'll be like, they are playful. You come back home. If you get pregnant, you come back home. Secondly, if you fail, you come back home. So how do they find out? Each university, they have overseers who look after us people will take care of our finances people will monitor us people will take care of our needs if i get sick we have parents day at 48 was professor mushunje he was also a student long back then he did his phd he became a professor and now he's lecturing at 48 so he was a beneficiary of the scholarship then they just made him our guardian day so he was looking after us if i was sick i would call prof prof i'm sick or if something happens, they'll help. And if someone loses a parent, they'll contribute money for the person to travel. What, what, what? They make sure we are fine, our allowances, everything. So if you fail, since professor will in the university, you will find you that you have failed. So that's it, guys. And uh, then the rest is history. So I think at the end of this video, uh, if you are still interested, if you still have the patience to watch, uh, I think I'm going to attach my journey from me. I'll be attaching pictures and I'll be doing a voiceover from the first day I went for applications, the friends I met, uh, the hotel, the send-off ceremony. I'll also show you guys um, the day we, we, we went by bus. When you're traveling, now the day of send-off, right? You go for the hotel thing. Then the following day, you go in the same bus. We had our bus from Harare to East London, University of 48. They hired Intercape. Again, you pay for your own bus fee. So the things which you use your own money, you pay for your own passport, you pay for your own visa, you pay for the bus fee. Yeah, but the rest they'll provide for you. So the presidential scholarship is a full scholarship. They cover accommodation and everyone is, a, is supposed to stay in race. 
like in the university residence they don't allow you to rent outside campus they don't allow students to rent they want students to stay in the residence because they believe it's safe yeah plus they have agreements with the university so it's easier for them to pay accommodation at the university yeah that's it guys so now don't forget to comment to like and to subscribe the purpose of this video is to inspire someone i hope i touch someone's life i wish you nothing but the best in this journey i hope you get the prestigious scholarship is the way i did you see guys i'm a 40 year alumni i'm wearing my t-shirt university of 40 yeah that's where i studied guys then let's do the the pictures let me take you through my journey subscribe enjoy so guys here i'm in a bus from machingo to harare i was going to do the interview then here this was the day of the interview and we passed here we were now bonding successful candidates we we're going to the same university and we're doing the same stuff so here we're just bonding guys you know we had become friends we know we're going to the same school and now we're going for visa application i was given this letter by the minister to accompany me to go and apply for the visa here we're going for the visa applications this was my last sunday in zimbabwe but I had to go and pray for the journey messes. Yes, me and my dad at the send off ceremony. Then me and my friends at the send off ceremony. We're all doing law and going to the same university. Same applies, my friends. We're bonding. Team Forte. Team Forte. Then my parents, me, my dad, and my mom. Then that's my mom. May you so rest in peace, guys. This woman, she died a happy mother. I made her proud. Then that's my dad enjoying the lunch at the hotel. That's me enjoying myself at the hotel, guys. Then that's me and my mom having lunch at the hotel, like the send-off ceremony. Just some pictures at the send-off ceremony, guys. We really had a great time. Yeah, I was just having dessert. Guys, you order what you want and they pay for it. It's the best. That's my dad as well enjoying. Here I was taking pictures with my dad. This was a day before going. Here we at New Ambassador Hotel in Harare. That's where the event happened. That's where we had our send off ceremony, guys. We had a great time. It was my first time at a hotel. I was so happy, guys. Then this is the day of going. My friend, my best friend from high school, she came to see me off. Here I was getting ready for the gen. We went with Intercap. This is one of my friends. We were going together with the parents. They were sending me off. We were at the bus. Then now we had arrived in East London. First night at university we in race now this is first day of school we were bonding with my friend then now i'd gone to the library my first time looking for textbook and being ready remember they'd scared us if you fail you go back home so i started studying now this is my first time at the beach this was our first time in east london you see the glow was coming you know south africa was getting into me i was glowing now first weekend guys we our first time seeing the ocean our first time going to the beach thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe and to like and to comment love you guys till we meet again in our next video give it a like and comment love you bye